I grew up in Liberia till I was eight, then we moved to the U.S. I've been living in Baltimore since then. The first time I met Melvin was one of his practices in eighth grade. I went with my dad to check out some of the local players. And I remember seeing him, and he was, he's like the same size he is now. When Melvin decided to come to the school that I was coaching at, he lived too far away, and his dad was working a double shift. He was having trouble getting to school. So his dad and I spoke, and the best solution was to have him here uh, during the week. First day I walked in, the whole family was there to welcome me. They didn't even take me long to you, pretty much fell part of the family. I said, first week went by, I started getting more comfortable with them. At that point, both of my brothers have gone on to college, so it was nice to just kind of have, like, you know, another guy around who, who became my brother. We built that relationship on the field, playing on D-line together, and then being home, he helped a lot with also, like, coming to the country, mom, like, I had a lot of problems with English. He will help me with that as well. It's different at first, right? You have five children, and then you bring in this kid, you know, with this African kid, and all of a sudden he's put into the mix. And, you know, quite frankly, we didn't know how it was going to work. He fit in beautifully. He's been, I would say, all pogey since then. Whenever we go to dinner, Melvin goes. Whenever we're with Amy's parents or my family, Melvin's there, and certainly Christmas. Whatever Amy and I got the other boys, we got Melvin. He's just a part of the family, always. For a white family to take up a, a color child, whatever it is, or it, not everybody can do that. To try to bring that person into that family and live for them for that long period of time, that's special. How could we not? And believe me, everything we gave to Melvin, we've gotten a thousandfold back.